right, there's no uh, voiceover on this anymore. No, I forgot there used out. to be the voiceover. Uh, this is Joyo Stream Live right here at Edmonton Sports Talk uh, on iHeartRadio. Tune in, EdmontonSportsTalk.com, as well as YouTube. I'll take a little bit as well, Zach. In Juice my it up. Take that up just a little bit. That's perfect. That is excellent. The Matawanek, Tom Gazzola with you here uh, on the oil stream. It is a game day. The Edmonton Oilers taking on the Arizona Coyotes. Tears to be shed at Mullet Arena as uh, a wonderful era of hockey potentially coming to a close, sadly, it's, as uh, the Coyotes are going to be gone. Be sure to pour one out tonight for the franchise that is the Arizona Coyotes. Um, Tom, this is going to be a sad night. Emotions are really. going to be running high. Tears flowing. Um I don't know if I'll make it through the full 60 minutes. <laughs> well, good on you, Matthew. You are a true Coyotes fan. You're in the den. Uh, you've loved them since the beginning. Do you know who was a Coyotes fan? Please. Tell Jesse, me. our former producer. I Yes, Jesse he was. He was a fan. Is, was. He, so he's, he's contemplating whether he will stick to it. So I texted Jesse this week asking, are you going to support this team in, when they move to Utah? And he went, depends on the liquor situation. I won't support a dry team. Well, even though he's all the I way like up here and everything, he doesn't care. This way. He goes, sports is more fun for him when he's drinking. He loves the patio beers and all that. He does. So if that is a facility that is dry and they, they don't welcome the alcohol, then he will leave his, <laughs> his allegiance of the coyotes and the desert dog and go find someone else. But otherwise, he might still stick with them. By all accounts, it is not a dry arena. Uh, where the Jazz play, which is great. And and then I know that somebody made the argument, I think it was via the inbox, saying that uh, that there's like a... Or no, I was reading an article, and, and it was like, there's a sneaky, good, underground, craft brewing uh, community in the Salt Lake City area. I believe it, but at the same time, you're like, well, probably not anywhere near anywhere else like portland is right at the top we're starting to develop a good one here in alberta they don't have the six o'clock or lager they don't have the six o'clock or lager and it's the availability and i always joke like we we would do our gazola boys golf trip down to phoenix oddly enough and we'd stop in salt lake halfway through the trip and we'd always try to get a bite to eat and a beer you know you, you did uh, 14 hours of driving you're on your way to, to the desert. You want to get a bite to eat and a beer. And we'd, we'd go to a Montana's. We'd go to a Chili's. We would go to, you know, just like an Applebee's. And it, just something convenient. No, we're not going fancy. We're not going to try to hit up a one-off, uh, bougie kind of place. It's, we just want to eat. We want to sleep. We got to shower and hit the road the next day, get down to Phoenix. And we'd always end up, there's a Chili's that we found, I think, in Provo, and that's just north of Salt Lake City, kind of like a, a Beaumont or whatever. And, uh, Maddie, I, I always made the joke. Our first experience there was they had beer. And we're like, okay, great. We just we want a beer and a nice, nice meal. And I remember the lady being like, all right, I'll uh, need to see everybody's IDs. My fair dad enough. is 65 years hey, old. Fair enough. You know, my, fair enough. My uncle's in his mid-50s. mid, mid 50s. I'm, you know, I know I look young, but I'm in my early 30s back then. My brother is in his, his mid to late 20s. And we're like, okay. Like, uh, my brother and I are like, sure, no problem. And even my dad and my uncle are like, us? Yes, you, sir, and you, sir. And then sure enough, we, you know, give the ID. What kind of beer would you like? Well, I'll take, you know, Budweiser or whatever. And uh, She's like, all right, I'll be right back with those. And I'm like, what do you mean right back with those? Where do you have to go to get them? Our taps are in the kitchen, and we're not allowed to have outward-facing beer taps. And, and then we're like, all right, fine, whatever. F five minutes later, she comes back with our beers. We have our meal, we have our beer, and it's almost done. You know, waitresses or waiters will be like, can I get you another one? And she didn't ask that. And we said, excuse me, miss, can we get another beer? So that when it arrives, you're ready to go. Yeah. When you finish the other one, boom. And it was, I can't get you one until those are completely finished. And we're like, what? And she's like, that's the law. So it's, listen, I know if you want to get a beer, you're going to be able to get a beer at those games. And, and around Salt Lake City, there's going to be an adjustment. It's different. Uh, the big thing is for the National Hockey League, the the finances and 
no, there's not going to be a lot of tears for the Coyotes. And yes, the game's going to be in high demand. Ticket prices tripled. I'm, I'm going to take a look right now. And I had people up. from Phoenix asking me to help them get tickets. I'm like, you're SOL. There's 4,500 seats in that building. Now you want to go see a Coyotes game? So if you want two tickets to tonight's game, StubHub, cheapest is 404 bucks. Yeah. American. No, Canadian. Oh, that's Canadian. Yeah, they've converted this to Canadian. No, if okay. I want one ticket, 404 bucks. It doesn't change. Yeah. And then it's Before, jumps, it jumps pretty quick to 500 A week ago, it was like 50 bucks. Yeah. No, it's all shot up. And that's where, like, if you're an Oiler fan and you flew down, you had your ticket for this. Your Would M-truck. you sell it? Your your M-truck. Would you sell it? Uh, yes. Would you? I Absolutely. would. Absolutely. I would go I would and have a great night. Experience it. No, I. I don't think I've had a lot of people, you included, say, "Wouldn't it be amazing to watch Leon and Connor yes. in a small building?" You don't think it would? Not really. Like if if we could have played, we have one game this year. Every year, the Oilers would go play in Claire Drake. You wouldn't love seeing Connor and Leon in a nice, intimate atmosphere? No. What if you sit in row 10 at Roger's place? It's, it's the same thing. No, it's, it's different. I it's don't like think so. It's like going to see your favorite. Okay, you're a Killers fan. Yeah. Would you rather see the Killers at Roger's place? Would you rather see the Killers at the Starlight Room? If I was, like, on the floor front row or if I was... Four, like, well, really both floor seat. seats. For, like, if I could give you f- 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 row five at Roger's place, or you go to the Starlight Room to watch the Killers. You want to take the Killers for that intimate atmosphere? Yeah, we're talking about music here. Hockey. And, and I feel like, to me, it's, I feel like it'd be the same for hockey. Nah. You get that intimate atmosphere where there's not all those extra lights, and it's not this massive facility. It's nice, small, quaint. I think that would be, like, again, I go not a full solution. This is two seasons too long right. for the National Hockey League. They want to do potentially three more. But for the one-game experience, you don't think that would be fun? No. No, I don't. I don't see the value in it. And maybe uh, maybe I'm jaded and I've been around. and maybe, I, uh, maybe you've just seen too much. Yeah. Like, I do remember going to Glendale when my parents had their home down there. Um, and I saw Nashville play Arizona, and my buddy who was PR for the team gave me, like, row five. My parents were like, this is amazing. Do you know how much this would cost back home? I'm like, yeah, super expensive. And I'm still watching the game the same way I would if I was covering it and had to do a pre- and post-game show. And then the Nashville-Arizona game was great, and then the Nashville-San Jose game was pretty good too and we had the same seats and i'm just like i'm having a beer and i'm having a hot dog and i'm trying to enjoy it as a fan and it's like lost on me because i you just you get this is 17 years where you're in the press box you're watching a game a certain yeah way. but i think also like but that wasn't a full facility that you were at right like how full how, how big of an uh, there there's was no like, atmosphere there's like eight or nine thousand yeah people. which it's it doesn't feel like a real atmosphere but, whereas but if you go to right Mullet, i know but it's 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 sometimes it's just about the atmosphere of it all like when you when you cramp five thousand people in a nice tight space it builds a little bit of an extra atmosphere and and yeah. it feels a little better it's it's Partly like what the Elks are trying to accomplish with putting everyone into the lower bowl, 31,000. You get 31,000 all together in the lower bowl as opposed to 31,000 spread out across 55,000 seats. Yeah. The atmosphere is different. And that's why, to me, I think Mullet would have been fun to have experienced where, yeah, it's you've got Connor, Leon, the two of the best players in the world, maybe right now one and three. McKinnon, I might sw- wedge what in between Kutrov there. about right now? I'd still take Troy. Uh, Overall, probably like like I'm talking like if we did a not of the season but rankings of right right gotcha. where you are in the like Connor's overall yeah overall yeah I still probably take Leon ahead of Kucherov season no yeah but no but I'm okay anyway so so what two of the top five players in the entire planet in that nice intimate atmosphere I don't know that's where I was I I do regret not going down for that and, and I have not heard a bad thing about someone being at Mullet Arena. In fact, Drechuk had such a good time that he's back there right now. He's back there right now. I, I've heard it's fun, but I, I don't know. I kind of look at it and I go, it, "This, it's a shame that the NHL had to resort to this." Although the NHL is not alone in this, the NFL had to play out of when they moved the Chargers from San Diego. Yeah, okay, but uh, what I will give that one is for th- that one. It was we knew where the Chargers were going. Good point. We knew what was being built. We knew what was coming. They needed to just go somewhere to get that done. Whereas, like, I think it's more baseball. 
we know the athletics yeah. are supposed to go to Vegas. We know that they're trying to build a stadium at the Tropicana. Yes. But that's not official. That's not done yet. It's not you know, done. You know, like yet. it's one of those things where it's not done just Maddie, yet. Maddie, there, there are people in Vegas who, when the news came out that the A's are going to yes. Sacramento, will be like, great, just leave them there. It, right? That's not good. If you're MLB and you're hearing that, just leave them in Sacramento. We don't really want them. That's, and that's brutal. And that's why baseball it doesn't look good. No. Hockey doesn't look good. I will give the NFL the pass because we knew SoFi Stadium was in the process of being built. Correct. And they were going to go there. What was the name of the small facility? Uh, it was that's 000. where, actually, do you know what? I think where it is. Let me is that StubHub? They, well, the name. StubHub Stadium, I think it yes. was. Is it that one? And they added seats to make it 30,000. That's the home of the, ga- uh, the Galaxy, yes. Yeah. And yeah, the Chargers play there for a couple seasons. The home of uh, LAFC, the other MLS team there, I learned this past week, and it's been this way for two years, is BMO. Really? BMO, Bank of Montreal, is the main jersey sponsor of LAFC. I know there are banks that are worldwide too, but that, that fascinated me. For some reason, I don't know why, I'm just sorry on this little thing, I saw BMO on top of LAFC's well, jerseys TD and Garden. stuff, and it's, they play at BMO, hmm. which... Yeah, it was weird. I think me. Royal Bank is a big sponsor of uh, the Hurricanes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, RBC. RBC. I, and they, they're goal. Well, it's RBC Heritage and stuff. and Yeah. That's, I think, in that area. Yeah. Uh, a couple texts into 780-218-9999, the Paris Jewelers inbox. Uh, Fat Dan just calling you out. Tommy's straight <laughs> no. up wrong on this, but mostly because he's a Killers fan. That's okay. Fat Do not rip on the Killers. I love the Killers. Killers are great. My favorite. Uh, Big Slam Nasty. Went to the mullet in October for my bachelor party. The ASU game was sold out in a complete ba- blast. I'll go back for another ASU game next time I'm down. Yeah, ASU is supposed to be awesome. Awesome. Uh, uh, David G. Oh, I'll read this one. Okay. Gazola has veins of ice. Almost sociopathic. Danny boy. Penner's Pancakes. Maddie makes a good point. Saw Def Leppard at Rexall Commonwealth Convention Center. Convention Center was the best concert due to this small, intimate venue. And it's like, I'm a Coldplay fan. I've seen them at Rogers and Rexall. They were great. Yeah. I'm jealous of anyone that was at the show at the Shaw Conference Center. I saw Killers at uh, Shaw Conference Center and then Rexall. The Which one Rex- was better? Uh, the first Rexall show was amazing. Okay. Um, the one at Con- Shaw Conference Center was cool because they were just on the way up and they didn't have a full catalog, but by the time they got to Rexall Place, they had become this global phenomenon, and I thought that was uh, amazing. I thought it was a better show overall. It was neat to be closer at Shaw Conference Center. I'll admit that. So the Coyotes got five years to do this, to be back. Alex Morello in Arizona. Do you think he gets this done? No. I do not. The news? I think the land auction is the thing. If they win this land auction, what do you do with this land? You're going to build a new place. He he has to win over so many people, and he does not have the trust of of, uh, those in in government. Uh, Local Phoenix business doesn't seem to or have not seemed to embrace him. Uh, The... Uh, it's the Ritz Carlton group, uh, I believe, are seeking legal action against them. They've stopped paying their bills for hotels. The I thought the NHL did. forced them to pay, and they ended up paying them. But they hadn't been. Yeah. There's so many red flags with this guy. I, I believe I called his ownership tenure a joke. I'll stand by that. Uh, my friends who there's, I had talked to one that still works for the organization. He said. Right now, it's like uh, essentially it's like a funeral every day at the office, and no no work's getting done, obviously, and nobody has a clue what's going to happen to them. Business side probably toast. Uh, my buddy was working with the um, Junior Coyotes program and was a coach, and then another buddy of mine left them two three seasons ago because he saw where it was going under the new ownership, and he said it was awful. He went to PGA of America. Having the time of his life, by the way. So, yeah, it's... By all accounts, from those who worked for the organization, it's been an awful tenure with this ownership group. I put it 50-50 there, back. I think it's like 20%. I th- <laughs> And he's going to have to sell the, the rights to the team 
and the franchise in Arizona to somebody else who's more reputable. The NHL, they're, they're not going to let Arizona go. It's a it's a market that's to. fantastic. It can be if you have the but if they care. It, hockey wise, it has been bad. There's been no teams that have truly been winners there. There was at one point I remember someone telling me they're like, "Yeah, the Coyotes broadcast are getting like seven seven thousand five hundred viewers, seventy five hundred viewers." Yeah, in a market of six million people, mm-hmm. it's pathetic. It's sad for any Oiler fan that wants to travel. That's all I'll say. Yeah. You just lost well, an that, extra spot. That's, that's that's where I always want Arizona to stay, too, though, is that you, if you're I planning, understand. you've got L.A. with Anaheim there, too. You, you got that destination. You could do San Jose if you wanted to be San Francisco and, and hit the two there. Uh, you now got Vegas. Nashville's a big one. It's great. Arizona's a nice spot, too. Go down, swing the clubs a little bit, go watch an Oiler game. That's gone. Yeah. So For, for visiting, especially Albertans, who are many down there, uh, it sucks. It really does. My parents were rocked. <laughs> they were rocked and devastated. They're like, oh, we love this. We love this team. And I was like, you just love going to the games for dirt cheap compared to Oilers games. They're like, yeah, it was awesome. Matt Awanek, Tom Gazzola with you here on the Oil Stream. Uh, the EST Flyway keyword coming up in about 20 minutes' time. The last keyword for today. Uh, getting into... A different portion of these keywords now when it comes to that. Uh, we'll get to that, like I said, at about 12.40. Your thoughts. Uh, nasty Chat or 780-218-9999 in the Paris Jewelers inbox. Chris Sadaway saying, hi, Matt. Can you shout out the Discord? We have unsanctioned ESD playoff bracket and pool challenges nice. posted there. So if you're looking to get into that for um, the NHL playoffs, check out the Discord. Um, I'll throw this out there to Chris. How do we send out like the link to it again? Because some, I think Zach come said, "How do we get on there?" Me and Dusty were asked, like, "I don't remember." Follow Jen Cool on Twitter. Yeah, it was I there. To, but I had to go. To is her. there an easy way if we could send this out there? The Discord's the one thing I've never. I've been I on it over the last years, week. but I've never. I, I haven't well, it's been like able to. Each member it. can send an invite link, I believe, to a Discord. So whatever member, it doesn't have to be one specific person to send it out. So if. Oh. Anyone gets a part of it, you could share, you could extend the invite to another person. Uh, that is Zactum that you hear. Um, this is uh, the Oil Stream. Uh, portions of this hour brought to you by Boston Pizza. The Boston Pizza Playoff menu is now available featuring the half time square footer, a flight of wings, the, the triple plate platter, and the new Chipotle chicken quesadillas. F- fuel your fandom at Boston Pizza. The next time uh, the Oil Stream will be at Boston Pizza will be in May uh, when you and Dusty will be at. Boston Pizza out in St. Albert, but uh, you'll be on location tomorrow. It's the yep. GCL Diesel pre- and post-game shows. Uh, tonight, 6.30, though, you'll be here, Oilers and Coyotes. W- what do we talk about with this game? Is there anything to talk about this um, Like, that's the thing. Like, the I, I, emphasis will be on the Coyotes, obviously. Yep. I This is the first time the Oilers have been part of a last game in a franchise's history. Yeah, there's not a lot of last games. No, that doesn't happen. It's a rarity um, for Edmonton. It's health, isn't it? It's I like was that, just going to say, the thing? get through the game, get in, get out, go to Colorado, do the same thing tomorrow. Mac T said it earlier today on the Hangout, and Belzy followed that up. He's like, you just you want to get these done with and let the third and fourth line basically be your first and second line for tonight. Even tomorrow, there's no litmus test against Colorado tomorrow, really. You you got through that already. So uh, spec just saying Pickard and the starters net for tonight. Yeah, perfect. Do you play them both? I wouldn't mind that. I have no qualms with it at all. Or is that is Skinner sitting too long? Some would say. I don't know. A day a day more. I don't. Honestly, with the goalies, like at this point, you know who's starting. How much rest do you need to give Stuart Skinner? They're probably starting on Monday for the playoffs. It hasn't been confirmed, but. By all accounts, I was being told that by Oilers staff on uh, uh, what was it Monday's at Monday's game. So, oh, here, okay, here's the thing. This is a preseason thing. Would you potentially consider starting Skinner tomorrow and pulling him halfway through, and no. getting Pickard having that feel no, again of weird. coming in? No, that's a no, weird. Is thing. that too weird that's in the regular weird. season? Yeah, 
where you get him starting a game, you get him playing a little yeah. bit, but he probably plays tomorrow, Skinner. I, I would I would have yeah. imagined so. I would play him tonight though out of the two. Nah. Because I would rather have him have that extra day off. That's why like I find this interesting. And that's why I'm wondering if Pickard plays tomorrow. It's just that I would rather play Skinner tonight because you want to have him ready for the playoffs. And then I give him that extra day off though tomorrow to be ready for the playoffs. But if you do start on Monday, that's you're gonna have a day off Friday. Yeah. Okay. You have a light skate on Saturday, practice Sunday. Once the playoff gets going, there's no real rest time anymore. It's over. Freezer bag makes a good point. Why not let Stu decide? Because the player always wants to play. If you ask Connor, give him options. Be like, hey, we want to do this. Because sometimes a coach has to be a coach. Players don't have to don't run this team all the time. You know, sometimes a coach has to make the right decisions long term. You know, I'm sure Connor would have played if he could have on Saturday against the Canucks. I'm sure there would have been a chance of that. He didn't sound like a guy that really wanted to play against the Canucks on Saturday unless he was healthy. I I, I sometimes think that it's it's I think he was when you go and always say well, it's up to the player, make it up to the player. Their focus is like they're the big, but biggest competitors there are out there. They generally are going to want to play. That doesn't always mean what it's what's best for the team long term. They're not seeing bigger picture. The job of the coach is sometimes to look fuller big picture. The job of the coach is to tonight, if if it goes the way that you're talking about, to sit there and go, okay, I'm going to take my first and second lines and limit their minutes massively. That's but he's thinking long term. He's thinking going sure. into the playoffs. And again, for that, I'm sure that if you go to those players and you said outright just hey what do you want to do they'd want to play that's what that's just the nature of professional athletes i i, I don't i wouldn't care what Stuart skinner has to say i care about what chris knoblock has to say because he's ultimately the coach and he, he's the one that has to pay the price for anything that goes with this good or bad he makes the decision it's on him maddie i think this is one of those ones where it's an easy to let the player make the choice it's not a big deal these last two games are a completely moot point. Exactly. So why does he need to play at all? That's why you go, Stu, what do you want to do? Of course he's going to say, I want to play. Do you want to, do, do, you, do you even want a goalie that will say, I don't want to play? No, of course you don't want that. If he came to me and said, I don't want to play these two games, I'd be like, that's fine. But I, Be ready for Monday. Sure. I, just, you're not gonna, I, I don't think you're going to find a lot of athletes that are going to be like that. That are going to be willingly to take those nights off. And then, that you know, I, I think that's going to be up to the coach to do that. So. And freezer break, I, yeah, I have no idea. That's cool. Anyway. We'll see what happens tomorrow. We'll see what happens that's tomorrow. Like, if, well, but if Skinner what, doesn't we, play, he's probably going to play tomorrow. If I he doesn't, so. yep. I don't think it's a big deal. No, no, I, I don't think it's a big deal. I'm just, if I was... In charge of this team, if I was Chris Knobloch, I would have started Skinner tonight as opposed to tomorrow just to give him that extra day of rest. That's just all I'm saying here. I would have I would have reversed these two. Right. Had Skinner playing tonight, gave Pickard tomorrow, because this isn't any you know, this isn't a game tomorrow against the Avs where you need to send a message. This no. is a game where you're gonna want to definitely win and be like, ah, if we meet you in the Western Conference final, we sent you that message in this last game of the regular but season. But what about having your best guy face the better team just so he's sharper, quote unquote? For the playoffs, because because you think the Avs are going to be playing full like the Avs hockey tomorrow? No, but even it's uh, the same. even a seventy five percent Avs effort is better than whatever Arizona's going to Arizona is going to throw at you. A team today. that just beat you last week. Yeah, that a, but that was, that, if, that was honestly, we're if in anything, junk time here. There's also emotions for the Coyotes tonight as opposed to the Canucks to, Good, or the like Avs Calvin tomorrow. Pickard deal with those emotions. I think there's going to be a better opposition tonight than tomorrow. This. I think we're overthinking this. Maybe you're underthinking this. <laughs> Holy smoke. Just needling. That a boy. Well, it's, the end of the, it's the end of the regular season. You know, this, we're this just, is honestly we're just making up things. Mode. Mode. Yeah. Uh, it's, this week sucks. It kind of Knowing, does. Knowing, once the Oilers to lost about. to the Canucks, it was like, okay, this week is kind of like, eh. They go and get me to the Get Jose. me to the weekend so we can get ready for Basically. playoffs. Basically. Because that's now what is the big thing. Hey, look. Hey. I'm the one that has said this whole time regular season doesn't matter at all. You did say that. How about the fact that this team finally, and it hasn't happened, it's happened more in the last few years, finally has gotten to a point where it's like, 
All right, you can you can take a, a deep breath and exhale in the last few games, whereas years prior, they had to, like, bust their ass just to get into the postseason, especially in the early 2000s. Um, this is one where you're like, okay, you prepare yourself. Get yourself ready. Take the extra day. They, they earn this right. Surprisingly, considering how bad this season had started. But anyway, it's a good problem to have. They've had a lot of situations where it's like, that's a good problem to have. And this is one of them. Uh, quick, uh, Northside Sandwich has texted in uh, during the nasty chat or uh, the hangout and during the show today. Um, I'm going to get to it at the end. Oh, boy. It's about Big Brother Canada. Oh, I saw I'm that. Taking, yeah, I'm, okay. I'm going to take the opportunity for that, so I'm not going to lie. But hey, I won't do that right now. I want to read this one from Eden via the inbox, 780-218-9999. Morello has a couple of casinos in Vegas, given how the NHL has jumped on board with sports betting. The NHL was probably hoping that uh, would be a new business opportunity, but it doesn't look like Morello's been an honest partner. Yeah, he hasn't been a great partner. And I think he also, I believe he had also won or got some casino licenses in Arizona as well, and that was supposed to be a big boon for him, and that never materialized into anything. So there was all these promises and never ones that were executed on. So, yeah, it's it's been a disaster. It's been bad. And Morello took over from Anthony Barraway, who had his shortcomings as well. Not so much financial, but other stuff where they had to be like, we got to move on from this guy as an owner. And uh, they wound up with Morello, and it's been bad. Dudley asking, you guys think we'll see Evander Kane in any of these remaining games? Uh, Maybe. Well, I, I think you brought up a great point yesterday on the hangout is that the Oilers actually can't do a lot when it comes to roster shifts. Yeah, they and, didn't and make call... changes for, for cap reasons. Right. We'll see Broberg. Yeah. We'll see him for a couple of games. Now, if Kane needs the time off. And that's where you look at here. Like, right. it'd be nice to give Connor an extra day off. It'd be nice to give Leon a day off. Right. But you got to first see, okay, who's got the Knicks? That's right. They got to be the first priority of, okay, do, you need the, do, do we need them to take the game off? Yep. And Kane, I would think, would be one of those guys that probably shouldn't play both of these games. He's been banged up a bit. Right. And we've seen the, we had the maintenance day yep. a few weeks ago. Like, he'd be, he'd be like this team is lucky right now with how this season has gone. Knocking on wood, they've been extremely healthy, yeah, for the most part of this season. You, not a lot of teams get this benefit of going to the playoffs this healthy, right? Evander Kane's one of those guys that isn't healthy. See how healthy you can get him in these next few days, yeah. Unless he want, unless he says I want to try it tonight and then give me tomorrow tomorrow off, that's something that could be done. It's not up to the player always. Dude, they have say in this. Sure, but what's the point of having any coach? Just let the players decide. Let the players decide the system that they play. Let let Connor decide how he wants to play. Let Connor decide how the lines are. Like the, what, the coach at some point has to make the, the decisions for the long term here. And if they if Evander Kane's bad, you gotta go to Evander Kane and be like, you're sitting at least one of these games. That's to me the job sure, of a coach. Tonight. Matt, whatever. It, whatever. <laughs> We're debating. We're debating game sitting guys on of this NHL season. Yeah. Whatever. Well, who do you think the Oilers prefer? Kings, Golden Knights, doesn't matter. Probably the Kings. Ultimately, if you had to make them choose between the two, you want them to face LA. We get that. Uh, LA is not as complete of a team as the Vegas Golden Knights. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Golden Knights have stumbled lately, but uh, Mark Stone. <laughs> will probably be back. That's a huge mental boon for the entire team. Uh, regardless if Stone is like 70% healthy, 90% healthy, the fact that they have their emotional leader in Mark Stone, who is a tremendous player, uh, regardless of what percentage of health he's at, uh, that's a huge get for the Golden Knights. And then Petrangelo, it's been weird, this virus that's been nagging him the last few weeks. Uh, we'll see if he's good to go. I'm sure they're trying to do everything they can to have him ready for the postseason. But, you know, the Golden Knights, the other thing, too, is, like, they have not been the same Golden Knights that they were all of last season. They were so consistent right out of the gate last season through to the end. 
and you slipped up against them like the Oilers did, and they would bury you. This year, that hasn't been the case. Yes, obviously, health has been a factor. No, Aiden Hill has not been a rock-solid netminder consistently throughout the year. His numbers are all right, but uh, he's had some tough stretches. Logan Thompson, same thing, a little bit up and down. Obviously, the team in front of them has an effect on that. Um, you're going to have to be great against the Golden Knights to beat them, and the fact of the matter is you're probably going to face Vegas in the first round. I think for the Oilers mentally, if they get past Vegas in the first round, will be a huge confidence boost for them. Yeah, that's why they're going to easily win the Stanley Cup. Like you predicted before the start of the season, before they went 2-9-1. and one. But No, that was after. That was in Feb. That was in Feb. In Feb, I said okay. if, if the Oilers beat the Golden Knights. Uh, when when we're right. in Vegas, I think said that the hill that they have to get past is the Golden Knights. After doing the morning show, when we came back at one point, I said, if the Oilers beat the Golden Knights, they'll easily win the Stanley Cup. Partly because of what you said there. The emotion, you know, getting through that. At, yeah. at any point that is in the whether well, first, second round, yeah. or in theory, third round. Knowing that you took them down. You took down the team that took you last year that, you know, if it wasn't for them, you'd probably go on to win the Stanley Cup. Right. Took down the team that everyone thinks is cheating. Like, all of this that comes in, I think, carries the Oilers. That gives them that extra jump in their step. the top. Lets them puff their chest out just that slight bit more. That allows them to go take on a Colorado Avalanche, a Dallas Stars, and gives them that chance to tip the scale slightly in their favor and goes wins. I'm with you on that. I was actually quite surprised at how much Mac T today on the hango was against what Vegas is doing and outright calling them cheaters. Because we don't hear this from hockey. We are well, not. Mac T is at the point now where I, he I, doesn't have to be holding I, to anybody. I get that, but we don't have GMs clamoring to fix this or change this. No, because they and know that the next season they might have to do something similar. <laughs> and they know it's, it's an available option yes. because nobody has clamped down on it, and there's but a reason But he was a why. GM, and you would think that, you know, maybe there would have been times in his past he would have maybe been like, well, you got to try to push the line if you can, but he takes the opposite approach, maybe because he's now removed from that right. spot, but I, I really loved how much he was against this and how outspoken he was against what Golden Knights are doing. He also made a good point about it, saying that if you try to plan the way you build your team using LTIR the way the Golden Knights have the last few years, that's that's kind of a tricky way to do it because then you got to bank on guys being hurt and you to, you need to make sure that the guys are legitimately hurt. There's paperwork involved. These things get investigated. So if you're expecting somebody to be hurt before the playoffs, that you have to dip into LTIR to go and get another high-priced trade piece like a Tomas Hurdle or a... a free agent like that's a that's a delicate balance and a dangerous game to play and i think he alluded to that as well i was on the i'm on the flip side still of it i don't think it needs to be close i'm okay with this th th one you have to still make the playoffs nothing's always guaranteed and two more teams need to go do it i still think the others messed up by not doing it last year with evander kane it was there on a platter for them it was set up they didn't have to bring evander kane back until the beginning of the playoffs they could have got another top forward brought in Ekholm at the deadline and that was the mistake the Oilers made last year was not doing that I can't you can't bank on it no but it happened it, Evander yeah, Kane but, went down and once Evander Kane went down should have threw him right on LTIR replaced his money with a forward you then still could have went at the deadline to they got were in Ekholm. cap hell last year yes still. but you throw him an LTIR you could have replaced all of Kane's money with a player at that moment and it would have been like he wasn't hurt. And then at the deadline, you still could have got Echo. So you could have had an extra player and then but you Evander wouldn't have Kane had Kane come back until playoffs. But see, that's where the league keeps tabs it says on it's that okay. stuff. The league says it's okay. Okay, here's how you do this. How, are, how is the league supposed to tell Evander, know if Evander Kane's wrist is feeling fine? There's reports. They can do an investigation. Like yes. they, they look into this. Yes, but how does what medical doctor out there could officially read Evander Kane's mind? Evander Kane could have sat there all of last year and just kept saying, my wrist just still doesn't feel right. My wrist still doesn't feel right. And there's no test to say then that, no, his wrist actually is 100% fine. He should be able to shoot this puck just fine. The Oilers had it on a platter to do this last year where there is no way you could have called them out on it. 
They just need Evander Kane to be okay with sitting off until the playoffs. And then they could have went out and got a Patty Kane right away or some other forward and then brought in the defenseman okay. at the deadline and it would Let's have all been fine. Let's play this game. Yes. Say that happens. Okay. Okay? And Evander Kane keeps saying, no, something's wrong with my wrist. Yes. Something's wrong something's with my wrist. Something's not feeling right. It doesn't, it feel, doesn't right. feel right. You get specialists, whatever. This is what the NHL would probably do. They go, all right, we're getting conflicting reports. This injury should heal in this amount of time. The player says he's not ready, but no, the, by the, all the, the time frame was perfect. The time frame, because I did he came back a month early last year. I did. It would have been late March. It was three months. It was, was late March when that came out. Because I was on with Tide and Jamo, and I went out on air and I did. I counted the weeks, and it was late March. So you are asking December, for him to January, be December, January, February would have been three months. It was like three to four months, they said, or whatever. And he came I back did, a month. Or, he came back at like two and a half. Okay, so they could have gone the entire way, and all it would have taken was an extra like two weeks. What? He's have he's had a little setback? Uh, Mark Stone's come back how soon from a spleen injury that should have been three to six months? Maddie, like, if it was so egregious that they didn't believe the player... They would send independent, like yes, I get that, but yeah. there's no way to to have an independent doctor say to Vanderkin, no, your wrist wrist should be 100 percent fine by now. It's it's feeling it's, fine. They can see Kane, it on MRIs you are wrong, and stuff. Be like it's healed. But when he grips the head. stip, he doesn't feel right. There are some things that doctors just can't know. Then it would and become an was, issue. And that was a perfect injury where you could have got away with it. You couldn't have stopped that one. Okay. I guess you're right. What what test can you do to say, no, Evander Kane, your wrist feels fine? You look at it and you go, everything is reattached. The strength is there. Like, he, it did medically, heal you should be able Yes, but you do that. understand sometimes medically it, it takes longer. I do understand that. And there's no way to officially prove that. I guess not, Matthew. And that's how they were getting. The they doctor could, have could look at it and be like, "Everything looks fine. We've had this specialist, yes. this specialist." And Evander Every, Kane could sit there and go, play. "You want to know something? My shot isn't there." Still then it's up. on him. But if the I, like, I've never seen something like that happen. I'm assuming that's what the league would do. They do an investigation if they thought it was so egregious and other teams had issue with. If you're it. much nerve damage could take years to heal. That's all you have to be talking about there. I, I've got nerve damage. You can't. Maybe that's the. But and that's maybe, your path. That's the Oilers had it as a path last could year. Could a doctor not do see the nerve damage? You can't diagnose that like that. I don't. I'm not a doctor. And I'm I have telling no you, idea. I'm telling you, it can't. Like th this was. It was an opportunity that you could have got around it, and the Oilers messed up last year by not doing it. Can can we get Doctor Strudwick in here, please? My goodness. As Robin is, it, I don't, don't like the unethical path. That's fair. It it is. It's unethical. But you want to know something? If other people are going to do that, I say you have to go do it too. I'm sorry. Until the NHL changes this, or if the and the GMs don't want to, we've already discussed that. Then you've got to do it too. Why be the team that fights to be ethical, if you will, and then is always losing to the teams that are doing the other thing? That as the Lightning and the Golden Knights go do this and go win cups. Chicago did it as well, by the way, with Kane. Go do it. Start doing it. That's why I actually don't have a problem with the Golden Knights are doing this year. Barry the cheater. No in. doctor or the NHL is going to force a player to play. <laughs> this is this is all hypothetical. And I'm not, the Oilers messed up last. And we're going into revisionist history yeah, here. The Oilers messed up. Oh Portions of this hour, the Oilers stream are brought to you by Popeyes. Oh. Things just get better at Popeyes as the new crispy chicken buffalo wrap is now available. Two classic hand battered and breaded mild chicken tenders with bold buffalo sauce paired with fresh lettuce, tomato, and mild or spicy mayo wrapped in a soft flour tortilla. Available in store or delivery. Is this a thing that uh, YouTube Trev had a couple weeks ago? What? Oh yeah. It was this because he was in love with this. He loved it. Yeah. I, I came, uh, came in from outside and I saw him in the break room just mowing down the buffalo uh, chicken wrap. And oh, he loved it. He couldn't be happier to eat a wrap. 
and he said it was fantastic, and he almost wanted another one, I think. He almost had room for a second. <laughs> you ready for the keyword? <laughs> yes. EST, a flyaway <laughs> keyword. We want to send you to Las Vegas. Uh, three nights accommodations, uh, two for two tickets for two, tickets to Cirque. Uh, thanks to our partners, uh, Fly YEG, uh, the Edmonton International Airport, nonstop flights to over 50 destinations. Check them out, flyyeg.com. Our partners in Vegas, LVCVA, the keyword for today, McNabb. McNabb is the keyword. Braden McNabb of those Vegas Golden Knights. M C N A B seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. You will go into the draw uh, before the texts start flying in. Mike outside of Edmonton says ten to one. Gazola doesn't finish the show. I'm finishing the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that just was... like, why are we fighting about this? Because you're wrong. Whatever. <laughs> Text it right now, McNabb. Uh, Zach Tim will give someone a call in about 10 minutes or so. We'll speak to them on the air. We're going to get that person's thoughts of whether the Oilers should have done this to Kane or not last year. Uh, but text at 780-218-9999 if you want to get into the draw for this trip to Vegas, which will be given away uh, next Friday right here on The Morning Show. Uh, so you'll want to keep your phone on. I want to read this one. We've got one? great text coming in. This is amazing. Look at you just stir, you little shit disturber. Well done. Uh, Hontorio Mom says, Tom, conflicting reports are any medical doctor saying a ruptured or impacted spleen should take three to four months to for normal activities, let alone high-impact hockey. This spleen injury should be the poster for investigation. Even Craig Button said it. I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm just saying, like, oh, God, what am I even saying anymore? Like, see? But we're going back to say the order should have done it with Kane. I'm just, I just he point out to play. that they could have done it last year. The option was there. They chose not to. Okay. That next time this opens up for the Edmonton Oilers, they I, need to go I do this. I have no qualms with they investigating the Vegas Golden Knights for what they've done with Mark Stone and LTIR. What's, I think it's, like, the but fact it's, that they're getting away with it, other teams set the precedent, Good on them for being able to massage it the way that they have. Is it a competitive advantage? Yes. Are other GMs complain about it? Not outwardly. Why haven't they changed it? Because owners, governors, and other GMs know that now that the precedent's been set, they can use it in the future. I have no qualms with that. Do I think it's Except fishy? You don't yes. Think the other should have done it last year. No, Evander. We're sitting you out an extra month. So that we can try the LTIR game. Because we brought in Patrick Kane. They weren't getting... Pa Patrick well, Kane I, I would not even consider coming I to Edmonton. I, I, I'm just throwing out the... I didn't know what the were, forwards were at the time. Yeah. I don't remember all the that forwards That was never going to happen. Okay, some other forward. I'll have to go back and look at what uh, forwards were. And then Hontorio Mums, I'll follow up. He had another text. Said, Ken Holland's still using Abacus to figure out his cap. There's no way the guy's going to do any fudging of any injury. God, I wish we would have. But there's no chance with this John Andre he would have done it. Uh... He is not the cap guy. Bill Scott is. Bill Scott knows the cap inside out, and he would tell Ken Holland if he could make something like that work. Just to clarify. Anyway. Also, I now I'm, I'm fired up. I'm Why am I mad? I also say this: I'm skeptical of the full injury that Mike Smith had. There you go. There you go. So you could get away with it. Yes. And they didn't do that with Evander Kane. That's Mike. my whole point. Oh, my God. They did it with Mike Smith. They threw him on the LTIR so that they could go change their goaltending. Okay. He didn't play. And then they could have done this with Evander now, That tells you all now, the NHL I does in this investigation. I made the argument they could send in, do an investigation. 100% they could. But I think with Mike Smith, nobody gave two craps. And they just said, fine, whatever. It's a chronic injury. We're done. Whereas if it was Evander Kane, who's an impact player... And the orders were doing that, and the team thought it was suspicious and wanted to investigate. They could make a stink about it and would create concern. But then that would happen with the Golden Knights right now. No one's doing that. That's and no where, one's doing it. And that's where I just go in the hindsight. Like, well, we're somebody, chasing our tails Someone's going to get caught with this one day. And there's going to be punishment for that. I but until then, I'd be the team that tries it. And I don't care, I don't care about winning honorably in that sense. You want to know something? You'll just be happy that the Edmonton Oilers won a Stanley Cup if you're an Oilers fan. That's what it'll come down to, as opposed to not having one. That's the way I look at things when it comes to that. So, Oh, I just Evidently. realized I didn't do something. What? 
Oh, for one o'clock, I gotta, I gotta schedule the the morning show to oh, run properly yes. after that. Yes, yes, Takes yes. me a very quick couple seconds. Good to, on to fix hey, that glue one. guy in for Dusty this week. Fantastic. Stuff. Uh oh, oh, it's tomorrow, and then uh, Gager's in on Friday. Ah, wow, walking. Yeah. Gadriel will be in on Friday, and then uh, a split between those two next week. Excellent. As um, Dusty will be back on the Thursday, um, which would, based on the schedule that you believe with the Monday start, would be after game two. Correct. So we'll have to wait and Not see how I that believe, plays Not I believe, I've been told. And I'm just passing it along. Sure. We'll correct that word there. You've been told. I've been told. Monday. By multiple so. games. We'll, um, because yeah, two, two, four, four. Yes. For those first four. Yeah. I'm actually surprised the NHL hasn't set up the schedule today. I'm not going to lie. Because we uh, know the matchups. Yeah. For the most part, we know who all the home, like, I'm surprised they haven't sent out here's games one and two. We know all the home teams for the first round. Right. So you could say if it's the Golden Knights going wherever, they're going to Vegas or uh, to LA here, or if not LA, it'd be Vancouver, Edmonton, or Dallas. Right. Those teams are playing this day or this day or this day opponent to be determined. I'm just actually surprised the NHL is The only put information I've been given in regard to like what might be holding it back is uh, NBA. NBA scheduling, uh, building availability, which affects NHL building availability. Fair. And on top of that, broadcast on the American side. ESPN, TNT. That's right. That's a big thing. That's something we forget about just because we know the Sportsnet here looks over all of it, but uh, TNT, ESPN, huge sway when it comes to scheduling. And a lot of their precedent goes to the NBA. Well, and they have, yeah, they've got the NBAs, and they have different nights for the NBA, so yes. they have to, like, counter each other when it comes to those nights. Yep. So um, that's a big, that that's a good point. Um, when it comes to my Lakers, they get the Nuggets on Saturday. So. Oh, I'm looking forward We've to got, seeing you uh, on the court. Yeah. Um, You don't have to delete those guys' messages. I don't know who's doing that one. Which one? What's happening? Slow Cap Johnson's got a message deleted by us. I didn't delete that one. I didn't delete anything. Is that you, Zach? Come. Yeah. You don't worry. Was about it bad? Oh well, no! It said Be uh, he wanted to. See, he said, "See ya, Maddie. Tommy can take it from here." Oh. <laughs> and that, that's that's. Maddie, Maddie. I'm not worried about these going. messages. Yeah, I'm no. good with that. Send those We've messages could come in. She, Chief Andy, saying Mac T would call Maddie a cheater. Yep. Hundred percent. I don't care. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. The Golden Knights have a Stanley Cup banner that's hanging in their facility right now. At the fortress? And right now, it's not. A, it's not cheating. It's welcome in the rules. At the fortress. And, and I will throw this out there, and I'll be very interested to seeing if they could do it this year. Last year, during the playoffs, at least in the Stanley Cup Finals, um, I checked at least one game. They were cap compliant in that game. Yeah. They managed to make it work. That that the roster, the they played in that game, all fit under the cap. For that NHL that season. So, mm. Jen, cool. Imagine these two on the amazing race. <laughs> I think we'd do fine. <laughs> I would be okay. Because we're not going to talk hockey. We're not going to talk. Although, I guess here's the issue. If we, if I find a, 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 a sh- quote-unquote shortcut that's not allowed, are we doing it or not? No. Oh, see, this, yeah, well, this isn't going to work. We're not going to get. They, I'll fight for it. Oh. If I yeah, find I know a, you would. If I find us a shortcut, you won't come with me? Not if it's not allowed. I want us to win. But how do you know it's not allowed until what if we, we get do d- it? DQ'd. Well, how do we know until we do it? You know what? He would argue that it was yeah, legal no. until the cows came home, and then the judges and whoever makes the decision would be so annoyed and fed up and tired, they would just be like, fine, fine. Here's a, my part. We of, haven't had a like a debate like this in forever. It's because I'm not on this show that much. <laughs> no. <laughs> Whatever I come, I'll get this debate going. Uh, me and Yukon Jack from 100.3 The Bear. Rawr. We've always said we'd do it together. I think he would do well because I, I he'd be one that I think we would look at it and if there's a chance to take an advantage somewhere, we're finding that advantage. Yeah, you lives if you life ain't cheating, dangerous. you ain't trying. It's that simple. I'm sorry. Who's the greatest coach in football history? It's Bill Belichick. The flight gate. Yeah, absolutely. He's still the greatest coach of all time, and he still has multiple Super Bowl rings. <laughs> Sophie Kirk, who's driving and who's navigating? Um, I'm doing both. I'm sure I don't trust you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever. How did I didn't even agree to be on your team for amazing. Well, right? we're saying if we were. No. I think I'd be the better driver. 
Actually, I can maybe see that. I'll let you drive. I'm smooth. But I'm telling you where to go. Yeah, and I'll then I can, the, and I'll then, do it fast. And the best part is, then I could. I don't have to tell you, but I could take that shortcut without you knowing that it's the shortcut that we're sitting on a lot. Trickster. Well, and see what you it goes. You duped me again, Matthew. Uh, be sure, uh, whether it be tonight or throughout the playoffs, uh, ride with Empton Sports Talk all playoffs long at Cool Bet. Watch for the EST parlays every game day only at Cool Bet. When Dusty comes back, uh, we'll have a parlays uh, set up. I'll probably have to set. I'll set something up for. Yeah. Games one and Mr. games Lean. two, maybe unless uh, how are we Dusty almost an hour there? through this show? We just yelled at each I know. other for like half an hour. Yeah, wow. yeah. We, we, Zach to comes already calling our, oh our qualifiers. Goodness. We're we're almost done here for today. Wow. Um, it's it's flown by. It's been a great day for it. like Mac T. Great in the hangout. Those two hours just Belzy hanging out. You and Belzy just hanging out over there, having a good time, and then yeah. the oil stream. And this is what happens when you have an oiler game you don't really have to care about. Six thirty, like. GCL Diesel it, Oil Stream pregame show. This is a game that you're going to want to watch because I don't, I'm a guy that likes history or whatever. And seeing the end of Arizona, it's still something it's to weird. watch. Yeah. Uh, it's a game you watch to see the Oilers be healthy. Just get through it. But beyond that, just with. watch all of this and, and see what happens. But yeah, oil, uh, GCL Diesel Oil Stream pregame show. 6.30 tonight. Don't worry, I'm not on with Tommy tonight. So it will be just a full, honest show tonight. And, uh, honest hockey discussions about doing things the right way with Tommy, YouTube Trev, uh, and Matt Cassian. And Matt Cassian, correct. Chief Andy, Maddie's next six day, sick day will be qu in question now. <laughs> Honestly, I'll say this: I've never taken a sick day. Yeah, you're you're pretty consistent. Yeah, yeah. But now, if I take one, there's gonna be uh, yeah. there's gonna be those questions uh -huh. that are gonna be asked. <laughs> Did you really just say that? Zach just told a qualifier. We don't. I don't know who's asking the questions, but hopefully they don't argue who's asking the questions. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> it's called a debate, Zach. It's called a debate. Oh, boy. That's all we're having here. Uh, the nasty chat has been great reading some of these texts. Uh, okay, so it is our chance to speak to our qualifier for the EST flyaway. Uh, who do we have on the air today, Zach? We got V-Power. The nice. power. Congratulations. You are into the draw to Las Vegas. We're giving this bad boy away next Friday. Have you ever been to Vegas before? Oh, you could say that. Yep. I could say, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was there last uh, November and I've probably been there six or seven times. Nice. nice. Now, if you were Ken Holland last year, if Evander Kane gets hurt, do you place him on LTIR and go get another <laughs> forward? Or do you do what the others did last year? <laughs> well, I, I'm an integrity kind of guy, so I kind of I kind of agree with Tommy. Fair enough, the power. Well, no, congratulations. Uh, you're into the draw. <laughs> Keep your phone on next Friday on uh, during the morning show because if you are the winner, the boys will give you a call let you know that you're off to Vegas. Awesome. Thank you. Best of luck. There's V-Power. See Integrity is great. Yeah. I'd rather have it's a ring. Horrible. I'd rather have the banner. The Astros still have their banner. Manchester City, 115 charges. They still have their <laughs> trophies. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, do you have anything else to say before no. we wrap up? Or are we good? Hey, this went super fast. That was fun. <laughs> GCL Diesel Oil Stream pregame show, 6.30 p.m. right here on this fine station. Myself, Maddie Cassian, and YouTube Trev. I I, I think I need a drink. Uh, we got the oil stream again on Friday, so we'll see how that one goes. <laughs> uh, Nielsen Show replay coming up next. As Tommy just said, their GCL Diesel Oil Stream pregame show, 6.30 tonight right here on Edmonton Sports Talk. And then uh, we're back with live programming tomorrow starting at 6 a.m. The Nielsen Show with Lieutenant Eric and EST Blue Guy. On behalf of Zach to come. Tommy, I'm Matt. Thanks for tuning in to the Oil Stream. Talk with you tomorrow.